So if you're out and about this spring, why don't you keep an eye out for, I guess, one of our most exciting, actually excited is probably not a very good word for this beetle, but one of our most spectacular beetles. It's a beautiful little thing. And um, the reason I'm asking you to keep an eye out for it is there's a national survey going on this year, um, supported by Bug Life, the National Trust, the uh, Oxford Museum of Natural History and Natural England. What they're asking you to do is to come out and look for oil beetles. Now, where do you look for oil beetles? Well, pretty much anywhere. We don't know much about these insects. So here is pretty good. We know this is a pretty good habitat for these things. We've got uh, a bare dirt path. That, for some reason, seems to attract the oil beetles. We think it's because they're looking for places to lay their eggs near to where you might find solitary bees. Um, and what do solitary bees like? Well, they like flowers as well as lots of um, uh, sandy, bare earth. So here, right on the coast of Devon, is a perfect place. We've got a nice soft cliff just the other side here. We've got all this path, and then we've got all these flowers and lots of potential habitat for solitary bees all the way along it. So the question is, what does an oil beetle look like? Well, let's see if we can find one. So this is the insect uh, we've been looking for. This is what it's all about. They're rather lovely. There are four species in the UK. We did have eight, but four of them have gone extinct, which is why there is a national oil beetle survey going, going on right now. Now, let's forget about all the different identifications of the different species of oil beetle. Let's just look at what an oil beetle is. They kind of look a little bit dopey. They're like an articulated lorry with a huge, long, almost a trailer-like abdomen that they drag along behind them. And in the females, this is really big and fat, almost looks like it's quilted, and it'll be stuffed full of eggs. Now, what? other than the fact that they're very, very charismatic beetles, they have an incredible life cycle as well. The females will choose places where there's lots of open soil like this, and they'll lay their eggs in a little nest in the, in the soil, and then the grubs or the larvae will hatch out from the nest of eggs. They'll crawl to the surface, and they're really odd little things. I wish I could show you but they're so, so small, they wouldn't show up on this camera. These are tiny little things, they're called triangulans, and they have on the tip of each one of their six legs three grappling hooks. And they sit in the top of flowers and wait for a solitary bee to come along. As the little bee lands on the flower, these little things latch onto the bee, and unwittingly, by the bee at least, are carried back to the nest. And once they're in the nest, they then parasitize the nest. They'll eat the grubs, the eggs, and the supplies, the pollen and the nectar that's been provisioned for the bee grub. So end of the bee, unfortunately, bit of a sad story for the bee, but a happy one for our oil beetles. And that's why they're so rare. They've got a flipping complicated life cycle for a start, but also the habitats that are good for solitary bees and our uh, oil beetles are actually quite rare now. But beautiful little beetles. They've got lots of charisma. Just look at that head, the way it looks around. It's got a bit of a neck. It kind of looks like it's aware that I'm here, but they're all got that same kind of lumbering look. They're generally quite slow moving. They look black at a distance, get close up, and they're covered on these beautiful um, rainbow colours, blues and greens, all sorts of metallic hues like that. This one here is, even though it's the black oil beetle, it still has this lovely sort of oil, oily blue, green colour to it. Now you might think that's how they got the name, oil beetle. Well, you'd be wrong, because the reason they get their name is that if they get really cross with a predator or a naturalist, they will ooze out of the joints on their legs. In the same way as a ladybird will, they'll ooze little droplets of a weird yellowy clear blood. Um, and that is known as reflex bleeding. And that tastes really nasty, which is why these things are so confident walking about in the open spaces. I'm just rather fond of them, really. Mm -hmm.